Hello, I'm Sarah. This is Hardcover Hearts, and this is my week of reading wrap up where I talk about the books that I read this week, what I'm currently reading, and potentially could read next week based on my mood. I had a great reading week. I read some amazing books, and so let's jump right in. The first book I finished was an audiobook. I realized recently that I do not do justice to the audiobook narration because I forget to mention it sometimes. Not only do I forget to mention the quality, but I also forget to mention who did it. So I'm going to try to rectify that moving forward because I think it's important. If we're going to talk about translators and the work that they put into it, uh, I think we should talk about other people that uh, play a big role in the creation of of the experience. And I do think narration is incredibly important. So the book that I'm talking about here is Love Marriage by Monica Ali. And uh, the narration was done by Aisha Darker. And uh, this is a story that was on the Booker, I think it was on the shortlist this year. And I even though it was on the Booker, I don't know what I was thinking. I just when I heard a comedy of manners, and I heard class, I, I didn't think Booker level. Um, and so I kind of was expecting a little breezy, a breezy bookery, uh, beach read kind of thing, you know, not the, the quality. Uh, but this was a really tight book, uh, very thoughtfully executed, uh, brought up a lot of issues that, in a, and it went down a lot of avenues that I did not expect a lot of twists and turns. So at its heart, we have the story of Jasmine and, uh, Yasmin and Joe. Yasmin is a Londoner by birth, but she is of Indian descent. Her parents are Indian and uh, they live in London. And Joe, on the other hand, his mother is uh, very well, incredibly wealthy. And uh, she is, he's raised, been raised by her sole, sole uh, caregiver. And she runs in very elite circles. She is also uh, a radical feminist. She is also someone who likes to stir the pot, uh, who posed nude when Joe was very young and is currently working on a book about penises. Uh, Ma, uh, Yasmin's family is very conservative, even though they had a love marriage is what she's always been told throughout her entire life. Uh, she's Yasmin's really, really worried about uh, Harriet. And is Harriet going to tone it down to meet her, to meet Yasmin's family? So that's how it opens. Uh, Yasmin has a lot of anxiety. She wants everything to go very, very well. Uh, she's worried about everyone making the best impression that they can uh, and is hyper aware of the clashes that could take place. And while she's so focused on what's happening with her family and the interactions with the family, she's not really thinking about the interaction that she's having with her fiance and where it's falling short uh, and what if she if this is really what she wants. So this becomes um, an issue that they have to start, they have to deal with. I don't want to spoil anything because there's a lot of things that go on that hinge on a few key moments that kind of uh, send everything splintering in different directions. But a lot of it was about expectations and assumptions. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Although I will say in terms of the narration, I did feel that the narrator leveraged accents for people that I don't think would have had accents. And it made it very, very confusing. Uh, it took me a few moments to realize who was talking because uh, one, one woman did the entire cast, uh, which is fairly common, but uh, it did feel like the accents were a little mismatched at, at some points or not evenly done throughout the entire book. Uh, so I do wonder if I e would have liked it even more if I had actually read it uh, in print. Uh, but that was Love Marriage by Monica Lee. Uh, then speaking of Booker, uh, I in my in real life book club, we read the shortlist for the Booker as well as the Women's Prize. And we needed to finish up on this one. The Promise by Damon Galgood. Um, really great cover. I put this off and I put this off and I kept kicking this one down the uh, down the way because I really was anxious um, to read this. 
if you follow me for a while, you know I've made mention of it a few times that I was raised in Mozambique, Africa uh, in the late 70s, early, early 80s. Uh, so I was there in, so, in Southern Africa for apartheid and witnessed it myself. Um, we would go into, into South Africa frequently, you know, like a few times, few times every few months um, for, stock, for restocks of everything because Mozambique was a very, very poor country uh, and South Africa was a second world country. So we just couldn't find certain things. And so we had the ability to go. So we did and we would buy for the community and then come back with these huge, huge caravans of, of, of trucks of, of different families that all went down to buy for the community. So, um, so I have a very fraught relationship with South Africa. I have gone back after the end of apartheid and it was very healing. It was a much, um, much needed, important uh, trip for me to go on. Uh, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to read about it. I've had a lot of anxiety reading uh, books set in South Africa that dealt with apartheid before. And um, I had a feeling this was gonna be one. I will say I was very happy to find out that only the first section deals with the apartheid years and the rest happens after. So that was incredibly helpful. It was also helpful to know that this is a book about the legacy of the evils wrought by apartheid. It's a book that deals with the individuals who benefited from and the legacy that they that um, that they had to absorb, and what happened to them, and how they lived. There is not a good person in this entire book that we hear from, so it's very important that we have a we have a family. So we have fundamentally we start with meeting Amor, and Amor is Amor is the young daughter. She's the youngest. And she was struck by lightning on their farm. And it kind of sets her apart from everyone else. Uh, then we have Astrid, her older sister, and we have Anton, who is the older brother. Uh, then we have her mother and her father, and we have her aunt and uncle that we meet. Um, the mother, as, as we open, the mother is dying. She is, has been dying a long protract, protracted death. And uh, she leans very, very heavily upon uh, the black woman that that they that lives there, uh, the black woman that they have in servitude, the servant that they have that lives in a in a in essence a shack on their property. And her name is Salome. Uh, at a very pivotal scene, and it makes up the 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 name of the book, so I'm not spoiling anything here. But at a p very pivotal scene. Amor is sitting outside and she overhears a conversation through the window uh, between her mother and her father. And her father is very upset and he knows that the end is coming. She knows the end is coming for her. And she asks him to promise her that he will grant Salome uh, the, the title for her home, that he will give her her home, that she will be given that uh, for her, owner, her own ownership. And uh, he's resistant, but he, she does extract the promise. He does promise. And therein, everything else starts to, starts to happen. Uh, Amor is very, very young. And so she, she does not have a lot of power, but she never forgets and she never stops demanding and asking for that promise to be fulfilled. Uh, there's, I said there's no good characters when I mean that, like they're just horrible people. They're absolutely horrible people. Um, but what the writing in this is exquisite. The writing in this is so intense. It's um, the construction is important. Uh, and the way that he plays with tenses pulls you into the narration and makes, pulls you in it and, and says, oh, you think you're just, you think you're just reading about this, but you're in here too. You participate in this as well. And it's about complicity. It's about, uh, it's about karma. It's about doing the right thing in ethics 
and community and uh, the, the evils um, that have been wrought that are not so easily dismissed. It was an incredible book, an absolutely incredible book. Uh, it's like a 4.75 for me, but I will never read this again. <laughs> it was hard. It was so hard to read, but I think specifically to based on my, my history, there were a lot of triggering uh, statements and things that I would remember hearing, uh, but a powerful book. I'm so glad it won the booker, especially as we look against all of the books that it, that it was stacked against hands down, hands down, this deserved the win. And I'm very glad that it'll be read uh, for years to come as the winner. It's an important, important book. The next book I read was True Biz, and this is by Sarah Novick. Uh, this was one of my book of the month club picks. This was for April. Uh, I had heard about this uh, and I'd heard good things, but I, again, victim of underestimations. This book was so much better than I had expected, so much better. Uh, this is a book set in a deaf school, and it's a part boarding school. And we have two characters that are students. So we have Charlie and Austin who are students. And then we have February who is a teacher. Uh, and their experience of deafness are all very different. Uh, their, their experiences, one because of February growing up and a little bit older and what her experiences were versus Charlie uh, versus Austin. Now Charlie has a cochlear implant and, and that has a lot of implications uh, for her storyline. And Austin comes from a family of all deaf people from generations. And it's quite a fascin it's a fascinating story just on that level. And then they, the Sarah Novick was so, she just really thought this through. In the writing, there, there are portions where she changes the writing so you get to see where they're signing and where they're not. And in the, I did listen to little snippets of the audio and you could hear some, some noises in the background as if um, the wind is moving and people are signing, uh, some clicks of fingers and, and the like, as you hear them say the words, but it's, but it's meant to be signed. Really clever. And then because it's a school, there are little uh, portions that kind of almost like an essay that talk about the history of signing and some of the facts about, about deafness, and, uh, uh, which I thought was also brilliant. So on, on, just if we were just doing the, the surface level about these characters, it would have been an interesting book. But then you add all that extra, and this is a case where more is more. More just kind of added uh, elements and made it a richer experience. Uh, this book was phenomenal, and uh, I, I can see myself coming back to this uh, and referring back to it frequently because uh, it was so impressive. And now I haven't read her previous work, A Girl at War, because it just sounded like something that I wouldn't be able to to stomach. Uh, but but this was was remarkable. If you haven't read this, uh, give it a go, or at least consider it. Then lastly, I finished the Country Girls trilogy. I was reading this with Eric uh, of Eric Carl Anderson. Look right there, gorgeous, gorgeous cover. So this is a bind up edition that I got a few years ago and it has uh, the three novels and an epilogue uh, as well as an introduction by Amor McBride. So we finished it this week and <laughs> So this is where having someone to read uh, a work of literature with you is so phenomenal because we had some of the best conversations. One of the things that Eric let me know is that this, the epilogue here was something that was put on later when the bind up edition was put together. And it's almost like its own little novella at the end, uh, which is fascinating. So I'm wondering 
what prompted her to go back and to finish finish this out for our characters? Uh, were they kind of living in her head and uh, not resting because she had something left to say? Uh, it was great to read this with Eric because we we both were so in love with these characters in books one and book two. Book three is Girls in Their Married Bliss. And at first it opened in, in an interesting way because we have not gotten Baba's voice yet until book three. The story is of both Baba and Kate, and we hear mostly from Kate's point of view all the way up, solely up until book three. And they grow up in uh, the country, in the Irish country, and uh, surrounded by really uh, difficult um, personalities, uh, very limiting options, but they're smart and they're savvy. And they go off to school, they're, they're sent to school, but they hate it. It's a convent school, it's a religious school. Uh, they get kicked out and then they make their way to Dublin and they live together and they're out in the world. That's, that's the first two books. Uh, in the third book, we have them settling down and, and getting married, uh, and they're in London now. They're in the UK. We open with Baba, which was just, I mean, it was a little jarring because we've heard, a, we've seen Baba, we've seen the interactions between Kate and Baba, but we haven't heard Baba herself, and her voice is so strong. <laughs> she is such a personality. Uh, but I, and I, as, at first, you know, Eric and I were just giggling and so happy, just like, oh, we finally hear from Baba and her point of view. But it becomes a lot real, real quick. Baba is a chaotic energy, is a dominant personality, is kind of a forward thinker, rushes headlong into the future, uh, takes no prisoners kind of person. And uh, it really changes the expectation of what you had for the first two books going into that. It does flip back to Kate and we get, Kate, we get Kate's perspective again, but a lot of it is dominated by Baba. I think this is a fantastic trilogy. I'm so glad I read this. And Eric and I are going to continue and read The Country Girls together, the memoir, uh, a little later on this year. Uh, but I will say that it is such a bummer when the ending is not what you expected. Uh, so the the build up did not did not continue uh, in that in that third. Do I think it's worthwhile? Absolutely. Do I think it's a, still a strong book? Absolutely. And I think there's a lot of important things said about the opportunities that women had, uh, um, that Irish women had, uh, and. There's also, you know, just like what happened in The Promise, uh, your society and the decisions that are made by others around you kind of seal, can in some sense, seal your fate and seal what it is that you're, that you're exposed to and what it is that you perpetuate. And that, that happened here as well. Uh, so... I end a less less in love with it than I was in the fir after the first book. The first book, if you remember, I was just glowing with joy. But still, the writing is exquisite. It's phenomenal. Uh, you just you just care about these these women so much, uh, or at least we did. So so happy to have uh, finished this book. So that's what I read. Uh, currently, I am still reading The Sun King. I didn't get a lot of chance to get back into this, but she's just, Nancy Medford is so good. This is a, this is dense. Uh, she packs a lot of information. This is her biography of a Louis the the 14th. So this is his court and um, specifically uh, as they're building Versailles. So it's, it's good, I'm glad I'm reading it, but I need to pick up the pace here because it's taking a little too long. 
Then I'm also making my way through this fantastic piece of work with Sean of uh, Pastory Time. This is A Political History of Act Up New York, 1987 to 1993 is the subtitle. The main title is Let the Record Show by Sarah Shulman. I still love this book. I love this book. It is so good. It's so thoughtful. It's so interesting. Uh, I just need to spend more time with it. I had a very busy work week, so this needs to get more attention. I'm also listening to the audio book of It Girl by Ruth Ware. I'll put the name of the narrator down below. Uh, it's Ruth Ware, Ruth Ware, it's really hard to say. Ruth Ware is like a thriller writer, kind of a mystery th thriller writer. Uh, I like her style. There have been some books that I've loved, some books that have been okay. I find her books really good to listen to. Um, so I'm enjoying the atmosphere. Plus it was set in Oxford, the main story. Uh, the story is there was a, an it girl uh, and more of a plain girl. And they ended up being uh, kind of roommates-ish in this kind of quad in Oxford. They were not at Christ Church. Um, so they were at a different college, but all the action takes place uh, she ends up being murdered. The it girl ends up being murdered and uh, our main narrator, the, the plainer woman, uh, un does not remember. She's the one who found the body, but she blacked out. She can't remember anything about it. And the man who was put away for the crime has died in prison. And it's starting to come out that maybe he didn't do it. And it's sending her into some panic. Uh, so it's a good setup. Love Oxford. So that that setting is fantastic. So yeah, uh, it's it's so far so so fun, I'll say. And then what I'm going to be reading. So the first up is the first of my group reads. So I announced that I was going to do two group reads this uh, this next two months, uh, one this month and then another one next month. Oof. So next month is going to be the Books of Jacob by Olga Tcharczyk, and this is translated by Jennifer Croft. So we'll be reading this next month. I'll put a link to the form below. You'll have the rest of the month to sign up. And then here's my official announcement that I am opening the opening the an, a group read for the month after. So this will be October, and this is Olivia Manning's The Balkan Trilogy. I've heard so many good things about it. It's a nice, big, chunky book. Uh, when I've asked people for uh, luscious writing, beautiful, exquisite, sophisticated women writers, uh, this book has come up over and over and over again. So really looking forward to reading this with a bunch of people in October. Um, again, I, if you're interested and you put in something in the comments, that's great. But unless you sign up through the Google form, I'm not going to know. I'm not going to go back and, and check because I've, I've been burnt too many times by unfortunately missing people who said something in the comments. So consider this the official opening for October where this is the book. But Sarah, I bet you're wondering what is the book that you're reading with your group this month? Or I should say, because uh, I'm recording this in the last day of July for August. August is Tomb of Sand by Jitanjali Shri, translated by Daisy Rockwell. Really love this cover. So we'll be reading this and checking in once a week. And so that's four weeks, four big chunks of this book. So really looking forward to reading this. I've got a great group of people reading it with me. So I'm very, very excited by that. Uh, as if that's not enough, I also am going to start a buddy read with Leo, and this is my gorgeous edition of Barchester Towers. So we are going to do it through the Barchester series. Uh, so it has this nice map, Folio Society edition, some really nice line drawings. I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, but I have finished the Palliser series, loved it. Uh, so really interested in going back in trying the Barchester series. So I've read The Warden. Leo just finished The Warden. And so we're going to start this tomorrow. And then it's also Women in Translation Month. So yes, I'm going to be reading the 
this big tombs of sand for that. But I also wanted to read this little slim volume. This is uh, Jhumpa Lahiri's Translating Myself and Others. Uh, I think that this is an, you know, she does such interesting things with translation. If you're not aware, Jhumpa Lahiri uh, is, writes in English, but has learned Italian and takes it very, very seriously. So much so that she has started to write in Italian and then translate uh, how, or have her work translated into English. Uh, and I, I just think it's such an interesting concept. She's an interesting person. So I'm really curious to hear more about her process. And, and I think it's a good time to do that with the Women in Translation Month. So that's it. Uh, I would love to know, have you read any of these? What were your thoughts? Uh, if you uh, have anything similar to these, please let me know. And other than that, I will look forward to talking to you next week. Bye-bye.